I just set up this new crooked board. Probably should have done it on camera, but I didn't. If you guys read the title, you're definitely gonna know that this is about hockey and FA boards. This is the last deck. Let's say uh, I might title this video like the problem with FA slash hockey boards. I mean, honestly, like the problem with this board is like it's all cracked and shit. No, I'm just kidding. That was a stupid joke. But yeah, I've skated about three-ish, three or four of these brands and a lot of cool shit about the brand. But in this video, I'm pretty much just going to be talking about the board and, the, and like the wood and like, and like the shape, how pleasurable it is to push around on and stuff. So yeah. Let me tell you so. Let me tell you so. Let me, Let me tell, tell you, you the problem with these boards. So hockey boards have been some of the most popular boards on the market for at least like two years now. They're popular for a lot of reasons. Not just that they skate good or whatever. A lot of it has to do with uh simple branding first thing i'll say is i'm pretty sure hockey boards right now are being distributed by bbs which is like one of my favorite wood distributors they make excellent quality decks uh just in terms of wood quality and something that separates hockey apart from like brands like crooked i actually think i accidentally got a twin tip on this board i i mean i don't have a problem with that i've skated twin tips before they're pretty nice but i think what that's obviously one of the biggest things that makes skateboards feel different is the shape <laughs> shape is huge and hockey boards just so happen to have very very long uh full noses that shape is honestly simultaneously the best and worst thing about these boards why are they good for obvious reasons no slides are going to feel fantastic front side and back side it just gets up in there and you're standing on it but one of the things that i would say is a, a problem with that is once the nose becomes too long how am i going to demonstrate this uh crooked grinds specifically become much harder the best way i could probably demonstrate this is imagine like we just exaggerate to a point that's not even going to be useful and put the trucks right over here so then when you slide your foot up on the nose you got so much surface area so many opportunities for where your front foot can land on the board that it's not going to be the same every time so your front foot if it lands a little bit up here uh, is going to feel a little different than if your front foot uh, stops sliding like right here Granted, this problem gets fixed to a degree with consistency, but uh, further show what I'm talking about on like a twin tip like this, you don't have that much surface area on the nose. So if you're sliding up your front foot and you stop sliding right here, uh, when you put your foot down on the ledge, it's pretty much automatically, it's gonna be predictable and replicatable to a point where you're locking into these grinds a whole lot more consistent. So I'd say that's a major problem, but it's not the only problem with these boards. I think being that the nose is so long, it, it doesn't make the board that consistent for everybody. So for some people, like how I used to be, I really enjoyed the feeling of like my foot would make very consistent and solid contact and hold while doing kickflips. But sometimes it holds way too much because of how long it is. Like your foot can just literally get stuck on the board. I mean, that's no fun for everyone. The big giant noses take a little bit of time to get used to. I think that getting used to your kickflip on a nose like this sort of changes your skating in a way where your kickflips become a lot less contacty, if that's even a word with the board, where in order to make them flip real well, you sort of have to put less of your foot on the board so not as much contact is made. So you're you're playing to the board instead of uh, what would be like beneficial to your actual flick. Another thing I think of especially people who are new to hockey and FA boards should know, if you go any size bigger than pretty much an 8.5, you're basically riding a giant rectangle boat. Like an 8.75 in a hockey board is, is pretty much an uncut piece of wood. Like the thing would probably be extraordinarily fun on transition and stuff like that i'd be hard pressed to see someone get technical on an 875 hockey and then again on the opposite side of the spectrum if you're going pretty much anything under 825 uh the board's getting pretty small to be cut the way it is so i think hockey boards definitely skate the best in between 825 and 85 which isn't that large of a range but when you get too small 
they get a little bit too awkwardly full. And when you get a little bit too big, they're just massively full. I hesitated to make a video like this because I feel like a video like this could be made on pretty much any skate brand out there because shapes and all that are so subjective. However, I feel like this is something important to keep in mind that just because someone really likes the shape of a board and someone recommends it a lot, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna love it. So you gotta think really about the pros and cons of shapes. And honestly, the best way to do that is by experimenting yourself. This is my personal opinion on the problems that I thought of with hockey. And I can think of problems with like any board or any common shape or any board distributor. There really isn't such thing as a perfect board shape. Everyone's got their flaws. For example, because this board has a much smaller nose than I'm used to, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to kick flip it first shot. Thank you to everyone who made it this far in the video. If you've been viewing regularly, you know that we're doing weekly giveaways. Ironically, this week, <laughs> I got two hockey boards to give away, uh, an 825 and an 85. So like I said, the best way to get used to a board or see what shapes you like is to try them out. So now is gonna be a perfect opportunity. This giveaway is all centered around pretty much giving back 1% of what you have to the community. So it's really about sharing resources together. Read the directions in the description below and we'll be doing that again.